Good evening, friends. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we do have breaking news this evening for you. Russia has placed the S-300 missiles in Syria after learning of U.S. plan to bomb air bases. It's been leaked information that has come out. We have also are will be covering a story tonight that goes hand in hand with this. There are some uh, reports coming out that Washington has backed off of its plan on using force against the Assad uh, government, President Bashar al-Assad. But before I go into that, let me just quickly speak to you real quick. Those of you that are watching Israeli News Live this evening, uh, I do know that Israeli News Live is actually watched by about a half million people daily. Uh, I know that when you look at on Israeli News Live, we only have about 90,000 subscribers as of now. But if you are watching this program on YouTube, one thing I do encourage you to do, look down, take a moment right now, minimize the screen, whatever you've got to do. Go in there and look and see what channel you're watching this broadcast on. We ourselves only air it on YouTube, and the name of our YouTube channel is Israeli News Live. Also, we do air this on our Vimo channel, Stephen Ben Noon, B E N hyphen N U N. So if you're watching in one of these two places here, we are able to correspond back and forth with you. There are are many other channels that are actually copying our videos in, in, in their entirety and they play them back, but they normally use some kind of sensational titles. We don't get into the sensational titles. We do try to title the information in order to get a maximum people to, to pay attention because we feel that the information is serious. But if you're not watching it on Israeli News Live and you want to be able to correspond back and forth with us, I encourage you minimize your screen, go back to YouTube, find Israeli News Live YouTube channel and subscribe there. Now let's get right into the breaking news. It's extremely serious what we have going on here. Now I say serious because I said Russia has placed the S-300 missiles and it's been confirmed that the information was leaked. Maria Zakharova, uh, who is a spokesman for uh, the Russian uh, Federation, uh, says that the S-300 appeared there in Syria after experts close to the American establishment had started leaking information that the U.S. could hit Syrian airfields with cruise missiles. Foreign Ministry spokesman Maria Zakharova stated, uh, and that was stated in an interview with the uh, Dozad TV channel. Now, I want to share with you, though, what some of the details have been that have that have come that have surfaced about that secret operation that Washington has been planning. Before I do, let me remind you, John Kerry in the leaked audio had already stated to some of the Syrian people in New York City with this audio that was leaked just a few days ago that the option was back on the table. And he did mention cruise missiles. He also mentioned that that uh, the U.S. would actually go in and they would have to take out all of the uh, Russian air defense systems in order to be able to take out Bashar al-Assad. So Russia knew then that they were intending to target them. I don't think it's over with yet either, even though there are some uh, reports stating now that they are backing off, uh, such as, as you see right here on the Duran, and I have listened to it as well uh, on the White House press release. Press release there says right here that um, uh, the U.S. backed down over Syria after Russian threat to shoot down American aircraft. But let me just share with you though. Let's take a look though at what what is actually being said there. This here is the White House press briefing. Let's look and see exactly what they say. I don't think it's a full back off. Well, what I'm saying is that the I'm, I'm not going to be in a position where I'm taking options off the table for the Commander-in-Chief. Uh, I think I've discussed in some detail, and the President's discussed in some detail, uh, why um, military action against the Assad regime uh, to try to address the situation in Aleppo uh, is unlikely to accomplish the goals that many envision now in terms of reducing the violence there. Uh, and is much more likely to lead to a bunch of unintended consequences that are clearly not in our national interest. But Would lead to a bunch of unintentional 
consequences that are not in our national interest. I thank God somebody finally has some sense in Washington. This is what we've been trying to do ourselves all along by getting this information out. And as I said, there's several people that have been copying our videos, putting the news out, so we know that we're reaching a minimum of a half million viewers a day, uh, even though it is some kind of crazy channels out there with outlandish titles. Nonetheless, Israeli News Live here, we're trying to get the message out and uh, the White House, supposedly, they're backing off. But let me share with you. Uh, I had to translate this. Uh, we use Google Translator because my French, I don't remember French very well. I did speak it as a child, but I don't remember much of it now. 800 Fighters Bomb Syria uh, is the title of the article, October the 5th on PressTV.ir. It states here, informed sources in Moscow and Berlin show a plan concocted by NATO to strike the Syrian army with dozens of squadrons in a presence of 14 countries. The German analysts and information websites that report for real.net, this information suggests the presence of more than 800 fighter bombers in this operation would take place in the coming days. So this, they were looking at doing this very soon. The breakdown of dialogue between Washington and Moscow on the one hand and the meteoric rise of the Syrian army in Aleppo, another NATO seemed to have decided to launch a major offensive against the Syrian army. Again, remember, John Kerry in that leaked audio was stating to the Syrian people in the room there in New York that they were again having this discussion and they'd have to see what happens. And as if you begin to watch the different things that are going on besides that, we see Russia sends in five more ships. Uh, they've got the aircraft carrier that'll be there on the 10th of October. Uh, there's an unconfirmed report today by a friend of mine saying that a Chinese warship has showed up in the Mediterranean. And we have U.S. ships there. We have a U.S. ship headed to the Black Sea. I mean, it's all kinds of crazy things going on all around that region there. And war is definitely a war that could go global, could easily spiral completely out of control. Watch what it says here, though. Now, Russia has also not hidden its concern that Washington cut the dialogue because this decision means the return of the U.S. to, to the military option. This is also to meet the same concern as Moscow, well aware of NATO plans sent its S-300 in Syria. S-300 missile battery will be deployed in the base of Latkia, but the S-400 have already been sent to Syria. In other words, they've been there for, for some time, as we all know. That's already been made public. Russia has never hid this fact, and they didn't hide the fact that they were sending the S-300s there as well. Russia's trying to avoid a world war. You know, when they hang these signs out here that you're seeing on the bridge, like happened over in New York City, uh, Vladimir Putin, his picture hung off the side of the bridge and it says, Peacemaker, the man is trying to make peace. He doesn't have to announce what he's doing. He could just do everything in secret and let America come right on in and then deal with the issue. All right. Now, I know there's a lot of rhetoric going back and forth. You know, the chief commander there, Miley, stating in, in, in the conference that he was in recently that they would beat their enemy and beat them hard. You know, Russia knows NATO is a big military force. It's not that the Putin's ever denied the fact that Russia is a big military force, but he also expects that, the, that, that, you know, that Russia be respected as a sovereign nation. But instead, the world is bent on demonizing Russia. In fact, today on CT24 television, Czech News, they're stating that the Russians are wanting to go back and take over all the former Soviet airfields in the former Soviet states feeding more propaganda here in Europe. But you know what the truth of it is? If you go back and do a little research, we find out that about a year ago, Russia began to work with some of the former Soviet states like Belarusia, who is very close ally to Russia, at reestablishing an airfield there, and a couple of other states that have close ties with Russia. Well, they have every bit of the right to do that in the world if they want to do it. It's not that Russia's coming here to take something from the people. It's just the other way around. They're working and, and making friends with their former partners that they had before. So, but anyway, we get all kinds of allies sent to us, you know. And the Swedish, by the way, they're sending their stuff towards the, uh, to, to, to the Baltic. Today I'm sitting there looking at the photos of huge uh, shipment of, of Swedish troops being moved to the Baltic regions there. And they're all of them carrying a bunch of big old uh, T4 uh, anti-tank rocket launchers on their backs. I mean, a lot of these guys had them carrying them around. 
What in the world are they using this stuff for? What are they getting ready for? You know, Russia is not the aggressor. If anything, it has been the United States that has brought all of the troops here and, and, you know, on our borders here. And the sad thing is we find out in, 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 a, in an old news story here that there was a group here that actually tried to make a human change to stop all this movement of troops. They were all arrested and, and accused of being Russian spies or Iranian spies, things like this. European citizens. I mean, it's, it's, this is out of control. Also, according to the German sources, the meeting of John Kerry and the Syrian opposition to Washington and his opposition to a military solution in Syria was not a sham, intended to take, to, to take short Russia and its allies once the offensive is launched. According to NATO plan, the attack will begin as a large-scale airstrikes that will last three to five days and will focus on the command center of the staff of the Syrian army. There will also uh, issue to assassinate top commanders of the Syrian army, an attack against public buildings both in the outskirts of Damascus and the suburbs of Aleppo and Aladkia. 800 fighter bombers will take off from Turkey, Jordan, and the Mediterranean, and cruise missiles and tomahawks will be fired from uh, U.S. positions in the Persian Gulf. Hunters obviously avoid this part of the Syrian airspace that is exposed to the Russian S-400, so they penetrate the Syrian sky over the northeast Iraq, Jordan, and Israel. It is an operation that looks like Desert Fox, which took place in 98 and was Saudi Arabia who will finance it, according to the German sources. No ground intervention will take place, but the rebels trained by the CIA will take over uh, in the hours after the bombings from the prim premises, trucks packed with weapons from Turkey and Jordan will feed the first in arms and ammunition. The offensive will be launched in a few days unless a truce manages to settle. Israel will intervene only in the case of an emergency. That's how serious this attack could have been. Now, according to a couple other reports that I've already found, again, I listened to myself, the, the White House uh, press briefing, which is where uh, these other articles are getting their information from, the exact same place that I'm getting it from. Um, you know, the speaker here for the, for the White House press briefing here, he doesn't indicate that, as he stated, it's not that I want to take it off the table for President Obama, but they have reconsidered how that this will not benefit the national interest. Well, no, it doesn't. It doesn't benefit anybody's interest. It doesn't benefit uh, America, the citizens there. It doesn't be benefit the Europeans. It doesn't be benefit the people in Syria. I mean, if your whole idea is that you're wanting to do an intervention because of all the lives that are being lost in Aleppo, what about the other Syrian lives? Those Syrian lives don't matter, I guess. It's just nonsense. So anyway, uh, here is an article here, the Information 360 Apocalypse, NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, not planning to take part in combat operations in Syria, Iraq Stoltenberg uh, said. That's, they're quoting uh, you know, the, the, the Swedish guy there, Stoltenberg, and he's saying that they're not going to take part into it. Well, that's good. And then the Duran, confirmed U.S. back down over Syria after Russian threat to shoot down American aircraft. Okay, again, I'm glad to see that somebody's getting some brains. So anyway, U.S. and Europe preparing sanctions against Russia for fighting terrorism in Syria. So that's going to be maybe the new approach. Let's just put some more sanctions on Russia. And you know one thing that really gets me? I've listened to John Kirby uh, on you know, the, the Department of State and the rhetoric that goes on there accusing Russia of not being willing to work with America on dealing with the extremists in Syria. You know, it's kind of hard when Russia is there trying to defend President Bashar al-Assad from being overrun by all these different groups that are fighting in his country, and there's about 40 of them, and the United States is backing most of all of them. To me, they're all extremists. Even the white helmets that you sent in there, they're extremists as well. We've already seen the videos of them beating the mess out of uh, the, Syrian, uh, the Syrian military that are captured and stuff. They're not there to rescue people. They're there to kill people. So you're going to slap a bunch of sanctions on Russia again. That's going to be, that's going to be what will work, right? That, that, that ought to do it. Ugh, how ridiculous. White House also may consider imposing sanctions on Russia over Syrian outside uh, the UN. Do some separate sanctions there. 
And of course, by the way, Russia is now officially blamed by the Obama administration for what accuses Russian government of election year, election year hacking. Hmm. So Russia did it. All this dirt that's brought up on Hillary and Russia's all to blame for it. You know what's funny? That's like saying, you know, you catch the guy, you know he's a criminal, you know, but it's the way he got caught is what makes it really bad. Like in the old days, you know, when you arrested someone, you're supposed to read them their Miranda rights. If you don't read their Miranda rights, they got set free. Didn't matter if they killed everybody in the house. And this is what they do over this whole issue with Hillary. I can't help but think that wondering that all this uh, things about Russia, accusing Russia for the elections and the hackings and the leaks, and the, and the analysts have already clearly stated it is obvious it's an inside job. That means somebody in the Obama administration is doing the leaks. It's not Russia. You know? I'm sure that President Putin would love to see someone like Donald Trump get into office, though, so that at least he's got an, you know, uh, an ally that will be a true ally to him. Kind of like when Bush said that President Putin was the best ally that the U.S. actually had. What happened? What happened with the Obama administration that took that away? So here they are accusing Russia for everything. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live and we we'll just have to see how things go. Let's pray that the White House really has backed off from doing the launching the attack uh, against Syria, which would involve Russia without a doubt. Let's, let's pray they really did truly back off from doing that. If they did, then I would say that what we're doing here on Israeli News Live, trying to reach out to the people to where somebody might have a reconsidering of doing war, then we're successful along with many of others like-minded that have tried to get the news out there to where somebody would change their mind and we would not end up into a nuclear exchange, which would probably be the end result of that type of action. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Good evening.